Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my kitchen. Something totally different this time, guys. My sister is doing her canning. She's canning beans today. I have been waiting to do a video with her canning because normally she does this canning at her kitchen. And I never get to do the video, but I get to get the production. You know, yeah, you know what they say. Anyway, guys. So when she said she was gonna do her canning, um, she was gonna can beans. I asked for her to do the, do it here so I can video it. I know everybody want to know why she don't want to be on the video. That's her choice. This is my video, my channel. She chose not to, but she does it so I can video it, which is a privilege. <laughs> Hello. You know, we always looking for videos. Well. Ah, listen to her in the Amen Carter. So guys, today we'll be um, my sister will be doing black beans, red beans, white beans, you know. You guys gonna see it as, as she go along. Pigeon peas. Oh yeah, pigeon peas. Guys, this is a life saver. If you see how many beans we had and where I had to find storage for these beans. And now that she's canning them, man, it's the bomb. I can just pick up one and use it as I go along. Pinto beans <laughs> And pinto beans, my mom's favorite. Okay, let me try to replace it from here. In one of my previous videos, I told you guys we have different beans. We like different beans. My favorite beans is red beans. My sister's favorite beans is black beans. My mom's favorite beans is pinto beans. And all of us like her split pea soup. That's another day. That's another day. Mm -hmm. God knows that's another day. Lord Jesus. That one I've been waiting for too, guys. But we'll talk about another day. But anyway, back to the canning. I will be videoing her doing the canning. And I will leave all of the equipment that I can find. I will link in the description below as much as I can. <laughs> and she has the book, the can, the, the canning yeah, book. The complete guide on home canning. Yeah, she's going to tell you about the book that she used to do the to guide her with the um, canning that one she will let you guys know in between her canning stuff i'm not even trying to mess that up we're just gonna do the video anyway guys let my sister start do her canning now hi guys this is where my sister will explain why she do what she do with the beans before she cook it okay so i have to pick the beans well we call it pick the beans it's more like sort the beans so that you take out the things that you really don't want in your food. So these are a must remove, have to remove this, including when you sort the beans, you want to take out this, this sort of stuff like bad beans, um, half beans that are not good. And you definitely want to take that out. You hear that? That's a stone. That's a stone that was in the beans. So when you're using dry beans, the main important thing to do is to sort the beans and take out those sort of things from there. Because the only thing you want to not do is cook that because if you ever eat something that has <laughs> sand in it, that's exactly what happens. That breaks down to the gravel or the sand or whatever it is that makes it up. And then, of course, the bad beans that are not good. Put it on your You can't see. You, you put it on the other side. Here yeah, we go. There. So like the bad beans that are not good, you want to get all that stuff out of it. These are probably good beans too, but they were in my beans that they didn't belong into. There we go. Um, <laughs> those you want to, these are a must remove. Remove those out of your beans. And then, can you pan around a little bit, please? So these are the beans that I also removed out of my canning beans, the ones that I will be canning, um, because these are half bean or broken beans um i take them out of mine some people don't 
it's fine to leave it in there. My only reason to take it out is basically aesthetics because these are half bean and then when they cook, they will cook at a different rate than the whole beans. So they will break down faster than the whole bean. Um, because again, your surface to area is very small with the half bean as opposed to the whole bean. Um, so these will break down faster and it will make your canned beans cloudy. So mm. again, it's only for aesthetics. Nobody said it was bad. You can still eat it. I mean, we all eat it. Um, but I take it up because of the aesthetics that it would do to my canned beans. But you can do you, boo. Keep it in there if you like it. Do it, because I like it too. Because that will go into some soup. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, y'all, this is my ingredients that I use for my broth when I'm doing uh, raw bean or dry beans canning. And it's basically bay leaves. They, I already put some in there, you'll see in a minute. Um, bay leaves, garlic. This is frozen garlic. I had it in my frozen bag. I love these bags. Oh, I love these bags. Me too. Got them in Costco. Mm -hmm. They were really, they're very good. Reusable um, Ziploc bags and I can put them in the freezer. Very nice. Um, and then I also put um, onions in it. This other half cut of onion is for the next part of this lovely broth that I will be um, doing. I just started this one. So this is, Ooh. I put some I put most of my bay leaf in there already, as oh. you can see. I put my bay leaf in there. I started putting some onions, and then I realized my sister wanted to record this. Um, so <laughs> I can put the rest of my onions in here and my garlic and my one bay leaf that's been lurking. <laughs> That's because I needed to get everything. Show them all your little steps. Right. Guys, you know how long I've been waiting for my sister to do the canning over here? Or in which kitchen I was at at the time? <laughs> You've been canning for right. like, like a year? A lot of years. Yeah. So then this will go back in there. I can't see because I'm standing above it. Okay. Um. And of course, this will go in there. I will need to remove some of this water because I had 36 ounces of water in here and I want to keep that down below because once it starts percolating, then I will, oh, this is a percolator, by the way. Um, then I will, um, it will spit up. So you want to make sure that you have just enough water in there. Um, and my measurements are on the other side of this loveliness and on the inside. So, um, this is the reason I actually use the percolator because I can just do this and release it into my jars, into my very hot jars. Oh, that's nice. So I don't have to ladle yeah. any broth into my um, containers or, or my jars. Uh, so I just have to do this. So even with the chicken broth, I will empty multiple cans or jars or whatever if we have fresh chicken broth pour that in there which makes it easy for me to just fill my jars okay so that's another use for your percolators well that's what my sister uses it for i would just use it for hot water but we don't want to say anything else thank okay. you guys okay y'all this is my canning equipment if you will um, I always have three of these jar lifters because, um, well, it depends on the size of my jars, although you can use them for any size jars. Um, this is my Old Faithful. Absolutely love this thing. As you can see, it's been loved. It's been truly loved. Um, and then I got a new one, which according to me was going to be good, but I still fall in, I still love my, my Old Faithful. Um, and then I got this new ball one as well. Um, I haven't used that as much, but I have a tendency to go back to my old faithful because I absolutely love this thing. Oh, I love it. And then my jar lifter and my, um, I usually use this to put on the containers, on the jars, actually, so that I can 
put my stuff in the jars without messing up the lid. But I need to get one of these in um, stainless steel, mm. um, which will be really good for me. Um, and then, of course, my pickling salt, my canning salt. It's not only pickling salt, but canning salt. It doesn't have iodine when you're canning. It's best to not use table salt because table salt has iodine um, and maybe other minerals in it but the canning salt is best to use. But however, if you don't have canning salt, you can always use coarse sea salt. Um, that also helps for me. It also helps me, or just sea salt. You can also just get sea salt, and I got this in the Dollar Tree. Oh, nice. And um, my percolator, as you can see, is doing its business. <laughs> uh, it's good and ready. The light is gonna go on in a little bit, and I can start my canning. I think my pots are almost ready. Guys, wait till you see these pots. Okay, y'all. I'm going to start my bean canning. Um, right now, I will work with the red beans and the black beans. I do have other beans. Um, before I get started, though, I want to go over the kinds of books and the types of books that I use for my canning guide. Um, the first one, of course, I always have the manuals for all of the pots that I am using. I'm sure most people will have their manuals as well, um, or they know where to get them quickly, because trust me when I say things happen. Anywho, these are the manuals for my canners um, and my um, percolator, cafe reader. Here we go. Um, this one right here, just in case something happens, I will know how to fix it or try to get past it. And then this is for my Presto canner. I have the larger one. Um, the Presto canner cooker is the one that's in the back there. I'll talk to you about that in more detail when we get there. And then this one is for my national pressure cooker. It is older than dirt and it's the best pot ever. They don't make them like that no more. But this is the one that I use um, for my smaller pressure canner, which was my first pressure canner. Um, and in terms of the canning guidance books that I used, I always, 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 always use the USDA guide. Um, the complete guide to home canning. I'll push it back and put it to me. Yeah, there we go. I always use this um, USDA guidance. And um, if there is updated, as you can see, this one is from 2015. Um, if there are, if you register your book, they will send you the updated guidance in terms of where you can go and get it um, uh, online. Uh, mine is registered so that if there are updated guidance to anything that I am doing, I always go to the FDA um, guidance, but I also love to use this um, Amish canning cookbooks for things that um, I want to get more detail in terms of options that I can use for canning. Um, because sometimes I do want to go rogue and try other things but um, I try not to do as much as that until I get more experience with canning. Then I can, you know, try to figure out, oh, yeah, I can can this, I can can that. Um, but for right now, I'm sticking with what the guidance is telling me that I can do. Um, and of course, looking at you guys online as well, there are several things that you guys have done online that um, and other YouTubers have done that I um, have seen. And it, it looks much easier than what is being suggested in the guidance or not suggested. So um, sometimes I do want to go and try it. And I have tried a few of them as well. And yes, they have worked out very well. Uh, but since I am doing this, I would rather do it the correct way and guide you the correct way. As far as I know, not that theirs isn't the correct way, but it worked for them. It worked for me when I tried it as well for some other things. So... I go to the guidance as often as I possibly can. And on that note, let's get started with our beans. So I have my red beans and my black beans here. As you can see, in terms of size and density, they're very different. These are very large beans and um, these are very small beans. The black beans are much smaller than the red beans. 
so when these cook they will swell a lot and these swell also but these will be of course larger and take up more space so i am using the um quart size jars uh wide mouth quart size jars for these beans because those are the ones that my sister will be using and for the rest of the world <laughs> meaning my mother and myself we will be using the um the 16 ounce quart size um pint size jars um 16 ounce jars actually for our size of jars um of beans that we will be canning so Let's start with the quart size jars and then we will come back to the smaller sizes. All right, you guys, so now I'm going to go and wash my beans. I'm gonna wash them first with um, just plain regular water. And then after that, I am going to do a hot pack or, or a hot soak so that I don't have to let it soak for 24 hours, but I want it to be able to soak it for that 30 minutes that the guidance suggested. A lot of people don't soak their beans now, and it works really well too, that works fine. Um, but like I said, I will follow the guidance for now until I learn better. So, going to wash them. All right, y'all, as you can see, um, a few other friends have joined us. Mm -hmm. And um, my beans are both uh, sitting in the soaking water for the first 30 minutes. And it's actually soaking in hot water, warm water, don't use warm water. I am doing the fast soak, so this is hot water. Um, once these are done for the 30 minutes soak, I will wash this water, pour this water out and throw it out. And then I will put them into the um, Instapot on the power pressure cooker or Excel, whatever these two these two pots, they're going into those two pots and they're going to come to a boil for two minutes. Once they're done boiling for two minutes, um, then I will put them in the hot bottles and um, fill them with my liquid here, um, and then I will bring you guys back and before we take it into the pressure canner. Well, the reason why we have to, well, I am soaking the beans is because from experience and as noted in the guidance, um, it helps to reduce the, um, the flatulence that would be caused. Flatulence is farting um, <laughs> in the medical terminology. So it reduces the amount of gas that you, your body would be producing because you're removing some of that silt from here. Um, and removing that and throwing it away. So soaking helps to reduce the amount that you would be eating. Um, and also putting the bay leaf in here helps. All right, y'all, you can see how the beans have swollen. They have definitely released some of that loveliness that we needed to take out. So I will go and drain this off, throw out that water and then put them in there and as you can see what happened with the red beans as well they all got nice and swollen and big and plump so i will get these out to rinse that off again and then put them in the pots and let them boil for two minutes then we'll fill them up all right here we go i put hot water in there to start out with just to keep these beans nice and hot and warm. And I press my um, Instapot button on saute. You can hear it, it's already starting to boil. And remember, this will only boil for, I will let it boil for two minutes. So once it comes up to a boil, I will start the timer and let it boil for two minutes and then start filling the bottles. And this one is already starting its mischief right next to me here. Okay, I'm gonna cover that up and I'll check on it in a few minutes. 
I'll probably see the steam as it comes up right there. I'm hearing it right now. And this one, on the other hand, I'm gonna go rinse this. I'll let that continue to boil or whatever it's doing. I'm gonna go and rinse the red beans and come back and put them in the pot. Don't let that splatter on you. Which, as you can see, I am just basically just getting it against the side of the pot so you can get it in there better and less splashing. And yes, I could just rake the whole thing into the pot out of the pan. But if there is little things or, you know, um, sand or something like that that was left on the bean that you didn't get out, this is where you get to leave that little bugger behind. Because <laughs> we don't want it in the pot and we don't want it in the bean. We don't want it anyway, other than behind. And I'll go back and show you what was left in the pan after I took out the black beans so you can see the stuff that doesn't you don't really want in your pot all right so this is what was left in there which is fine really um I'll put this down and stir my bean pot for a minute So once this comes up to a boil, then we will, I'm going to throw these all out, but here goes. That's the red beans. And the stuff from the black beans. Look at how much stuff was left in there from the black beans. Oh my God. After washing and doing all that steps before you get there. Yeah. But again, you still can use dry beans, people. It's not that difficult. Time. Time. You said it? Yeah, two minutes. All right, you guys. So as you can see, I had to quickly take off my little jar, my cover from there because the little bugger was over boiling. Um, <laughs> so I took it off really, really quickly and um, started my timer. So in two minutes, that one should be done. And a few minutes after, well, not even a few minutes, a few minutes is too yellow. Um, probably a few seconds later, this one should be done because it's already starting to look like it's coming up to a boil in there. And then we will start putting them in our jars. Um, this is already done. This is our liquid brine, or not even brine, the liquid that's going into the, um, into the jars. Um, so once this is done, fill the jars, pour this in to top it off, and we're good to go. That's foam that's coming up from there. That's what you need to get off. All right, y'all. So we are back and I got my jars here. They're still hot. So um, let me go get the rest of my accoutrement so I can start filling it because I didn't bring a ladle. Um, I need to get the ladle and I have all of my lids and stuff here. I'm going to basically just take this out, the beans, just the bean, not the liquid. I just want the bean because I'm filling it with this liquid. Um, and I will leave that liquid behind. So let me just go get a, um, yikes. Oh, I have some very unruly friends today. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Time? Yes, time please. Set this for two minutes. Needless to say, that gave me two minutes to get that one done. Hey, I need a slotted spoon. Got it. All right, I'm going to fill this these jars up to, uh, oh my God, that smells good. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to fill these jars up to uh, three quarters or less. Maybe I'll just do half. Let's see what half will look like. Okay, that looks like half to me. That looks like half, right? Oops, no idea. Yeah. That looks like half, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep, that looks like it's gonna be good. That's good? Yeah. Okay. Because it's gonna swell more. Don't do that, people. Please don't do that. The jars are hot. I need to turn this off. You need to get a slotted spoon. You probably do have a slotted spoon for this. Um, yeah, two minutes for your other. Two minutes is up? Yeah. Oh my. 
Oh, oh, sorry. I just kept going. Oh. oh. <laughs> you need to take on some. <laughs> That's about three quarters, I hope. Yeah, that's like three quarters. Mm -hmm. Okay, three quarters. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. So there's still beans in that. All right, here goes the brine or the broth, the fill liquid. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm -hmm. And this will go to one inch headspace. Oh, I need to do the vinegar wipe. Hold on a second before I put this on. There is, it's best for you to do the wipe the tip of this. So I'll put this here for now. This is not a smart idea, people. That thing is hot. A piece of paper towel. I repeat it again. I just went to get a little bit of vinegar and a piece of paper towel so that I can wipe the tip of the jars, the mouth of the jars, before I put the, um, see, that's why you need to wipe that off. And these are soaking, the lids um, are soaking in hot water and the rings as well. You really don't have to do that anymore according to FDA instructions, but to me it softens the lid, the um, liner of the, um, it softens the liner inside there so that it would, you get better adhesion when you put it onto the bottle and it pressure cans. And I'm tightening my rings as recommended fingertip tight meaning you don't use anything else to tighten it other than your finger I was told to slide on the... <laughs> so here is my fingertip tight not too tight just fingertip tight and I'm gonna get my jar lifter and get them into the all right y'all here is my jar lifter and I'm taking this over to the camera um, now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my canner in a few minutes, but as you can see in there, I, um, I have my, the, these here, uh, calcium deposits, if you probably want to call them that, I don't know what they are, but it's because the, um, I didn't put the vinegar in there a few times when I was canning. So now I've already put the vinegar into the water and I took the liner out so I can fit more bottles because this is really, really thick. I would have to use a liner with this one though. Here goes jar number two and my water is actually still just at a simmer. As you can see, it's at a simmer and I'm gonna put the rest of the other jars in there in a bit. All right, y'all, let's start the red beans. And yes, you can use that liquid if you want to use that liquid, like I said. But I have a much more delicious liquid to fill it with. That's a little more than three quarters, I'd say. Yeah. Is it three quarters? It looks like a little bit more. A little more. All right, I'm going to dump this in here for now because I don't have another jar that's ready yet. They're still staying hot. No, I think I did too, too much. much. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially for red beans. Right there? Yeah, that's good. At least look like that to me. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Three quarters full. Because I don't, it's going to go straight in. And I do prefer this liquid though, because this one has the bay leaf and the onion and the garlic and mm -hmm. the, the goodness that one didn't yeah that's all the plain water mm -hmm. all right I 
again, remember this is fingertip tight and the jar is hot. Um, and just to let y'all know that when you're doing canning, um, it's recommended that you start with three inches of water in your canner. So I started with my three inches of water. And if I'm going to reuse the same water, then I will check it again to make sure that it's still at three or I add enough water to get back up to three inches. And there we go. So now that my last jar is in the canner, I am going to put my lid on. And as you can see, it's completely on there now. It's can't go anymore. And because this is one of the national uh, pressure canners, it goes by the dial gauge. So once this starts going up, I'm gonna turn up the canner so that it can start the pressure. As soon as you see this starts to do its business, um, then you start your timer. And I'm gonna pressure these beans because they're quart sized jars. We're pressuring them for 90 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. So when this gets gauge gets to 11, then I will start the timer it, the gauge needs to get to 11 and then we start the timer. Um, once it starts timing, we're gonna, at 90 minutes, you try to keep it at that 11 minutes of pressure so you regulate it using your um, stove dial gauge. And then you start timing. Once it's 90 minutes is up, it's done. And I'm gonna let it self-release. So I am not opening this until it actually gets back down. It has to get back down to zero. It won't let you open it anyways. So it needs to get back down to zero. And once it gets back down to zero, it's gonna be safe to release, I mean, to open the pot and take your stuff out and start the next one. But since we have a second pressure, I can fit, I can fit 14 cans in here um, because I'm doing maybe, I'll do pint sizes in here. So I can fit the 14 cans, either 14 or um, it says, the USDA book says nine pints. So, yeah, we'll fit about 14. Oh, you want the whole pump? Oh, hi, boo boo. You're on camera. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the entire pot. I was so close to the pot and it's so big. <laughs> so I have to step back so you guys can see the size of the pot and the difference in the two sizes. And the reason that pot is there, the Le Creuset, is because I need hot, I constantly need hot water. So I have that and I have the electric kettle going as well. Some serious things going on, yes, serious. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I just filled up this first one. See the smoke coming out of that thing with the lids. Mm -hmm. I'm just softening up the insides. You really don't even have to do that. Again, fingertip tight. And I'm going to take this into the next canner. And I don't know where I left my lifter. Go for it. All right. So as you can see, y'all, I have poured out the liquid from here into this little container right here. And um, you can see that I poured it into this. So I'm going to fill this to a half and I think I have that much left in here. I don't know if that's a half or not, but if it is, it's going into a jar. If it's not, it's going into a pint or whatever I got left. That looks like a half, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> I need that. I need that. <laughs> Oops. All 
right so we will fill this up again with our liquid I think that should can hold a little bit more a little more, more beans mm -hmm. I'll add a little bit more in here y'all just a tad bit more and I'm probably reducing the amount from the next one I don't know where that's gonna go but I got a floater Could you check my pressure, please? Exactly, I can. Oh, good. I just want to make sure it's not at 11. Oh, I need 10. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> Just right, right. yep. Good board. Oh, and I had a floater. Oh, I got two. Oh, that smells so good. It smells good. Again, fingertip tight, fingertip tight. Pour out some of that because it's right at that where it says the thin line. Mm -hmm. I left the jar lifter somewhere again. That's why I have multiples, you know. <laughs> There we go. So. which is the pigeon peas um, and this is what the pigeon peas look like I'm gonna pick up my two sample pieces so you can see them mm -hmm. so this is what the pigeon pea look like and um, this is the dry pigeon peas uh, that you would buy like any regular dry bean um, so you can see what it looks like my friend in Trinidad um, Mrs. Paris uh, actually grows these so I got to taste them fresh because uh, she picked them and froze them and cooked them when we were there visiting um, and I got to taste them fresh so if you ever Sheesh. grow your own pigeon peas like Mrs. Paris please please let me know you can send my sister some please. <laughs> she's gonna have a post box soon send me some it is so much better than this but anywho, this is what we have here. This is dry pigeon peas. And I'm going to show you how we can can this. Mm -mm -mm. So now I'm going to And go. whose favorite beans is that? Oh, and this is my mother's favorite beans. Absolute favorite beans. <laughs> Between this and pinto beans is a close second. Just a hair <laughs> second. Right, mother? Say yes. Yes, I want you to say yes. You said yes, yes. <laughs> so the next bean after that, or that will go next, is my mother's absolute second favorite. favorite. The one that's winning by a hair. <laughs> the pinto, the beans. pinto beans, my people. The pinto beans. Oh. My mother will forever love pinto beans till the cows come home and then some. <laughs> to the point where none of us want pinto, pinto beans. beans. Uh -uh. <laughs> No. 
Mithil Pinta means a chicken. Oh my God. My mother would be in hog. Oh, a lie. Chicken heaven. <laughs> I'm not deleting this portion, guys. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to go wash my beans and get them soaked and bring you back in a bit. Okay, y'all. So, we've washed them. So, now they're going to sit and soak for 30 minutes. And Siri is counting down. <laughs> um, and when that's done, we'll wash them again. And then put them in the pot for two minutes to boil and then we'll fill our jars mm -hmm. okay y'all see how these beans have already gotten so plumped I even had to add a little bit more water to it because that's how much water they have absorbed wow. and that was so nice and plumped yes they have so I'm gonna go drain this and um, rinse it off and then I'm going to put this beans into this pot over here and then let it go for a good two minutes after it starts. Once it starts boiling, then we're going to start the timer for two minutes. Same thing with this one. Those are the max fill. I just realized this only takes two bags, but that's if you're pressuring it. Anyhow, I'm going to finish putting all of these beans in here and let it come to a boil. You wanna pour the hot water for me if you can. And I'm pouring hot water in because remember this was already soaking in hot water. So hot, 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 hot. Um, and it will start boiling faster. Go for it. I dropped the bean. Okay, I don't like to just pour this in there because again, like I said, if there's any other pieces of anything left in the bottom of this pan, I don't want it in my beans. So I always try to not just dump it in. See those little black pieces? We can't see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was talking to me. <laughs> Got you. All right. So all those things that I don't want in my beans, let me just stir this up for a bit and get it all down there. Okay, I think that's enough. I will cover this up and let that go. Once it comes to a boil, we start timing it for two minutes. On to the next one. Pigeon peas that's been soaked and it's not going into the pot. Stuff that's from the bottom, which is really not bad. Yeah, for the pigeon peas? Yeah. So let me go get the hot water, um, which is running right now. Uh, and then I'll pour the hot water in and start that pot. I'm gonna pour some hot water into this. I think that's enough. There's a bean hanging out on the side. Caught that bugger <laughs> and start and saute. Oh, that said meat. <laughs> timer. Time. Here, Siri. Set the timer for two minutes. See, I told you Siri was going to do it. Okay, y'all. As you can see, my beans are going to boil. The boiling. The boiling. My beans are boiling for two minutes. So I need to start setting up my... Ooh. Yeah, I think that's hot. What do you think? Uh-huh. You can see the smoke on that. Okay. So, you got to remember this is a half. Yes, Lord. This is a half. That looks like more than a half to me. Nope. About a half, I'd say. Yes. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. y'all this is how I do my hot water and keep my jars hot just before I because usually I wash them I wash them and keep them hot 
we are good to go. I think I need about three to just fill the bottom liner, the bottom section of my canner, of oh, the, the big canner. The big canner. Right, I'm going to leave these ones alone for right now because I don't want these to get too cold. So I will fill these with the liquid that we need to fill it with. And I could hear that jiggling in there. All right, you guys, I'm going to debubble this one. I didn't debubble the others. But they didn't look like they needed debubbling. But anyhow, you should debubble, even if they look or they don't look. And then top off your liquid after you debubble. If you need it. At this point, this one doesn't need it. And I need to wipe this off. Did I? I didn't dip it, did I? Nope, I didn't dip it. Okay, let's get this done. I can wipe all of these actually. Since I'm at it, might as well make hay while the sun shine. There's only one problem. Mm -hmm. I'm wiping these off, but I haven't. Oh, I'm not going to use this again. So, make this okay. make these off. Okay. I didn't wipe my legs. I did wipe them. You wiped them, yeah. chess <laughs> making your moves mm -hmm. yeah I almost clicked my finger mm -hmm. I was never a waitress in a former life so bear <laughs> with me my former life was not like for waitressing Definitely not. But I'm going to do my best. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, y'all. As you can see, I probably need just about three more to fill this first layer. Yeah. I sure do. So I know I put in my separator lid right on top of these and I will start the next layer and I was able to fit eight bottles down there. And as you know, you always try to balance your, your can, try to balance them all when you're putting in your, filling your canner. Go get the rest of them. We're gonna fill these with the pigeon peas. The jars are warm, they're not hot, hot. So I have hot liquid over there that I'm gonna be putting into these jars. Actually, before we started this, the white beans so that it can continue to do its softening um, while I finish canning the. Um, well, fill in the jars for the pigeon peas um, and uh, the rest of the pinto and the beans. rest of the pinto beans. All right, so let's fill the ones with the pigeon peas. I just filled one here. That bottle is hot. Thankfully, it isn't. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to have to tilt this to be able to get some. Oh, you're running jar. out. Because I am clearly, as you can see, on my absolute last mm. leg. <laughs> oh my God, y'all. This is priceless. Mm. Priceless. Oh, no, it's done. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get a refresher. <laughs> I shall take these two over into the canner. Okay. Yeah, so 
this is my last bean. I'm gonna let this go for two minutes. And then I'll fill my pint jars. And start the next can. That don't have much poop like the other ones, right? No. That's just from where the beans split open. Mm -hmm. All right, let me fill it up with hot water because I want it done like today, like now, like yesterday. <laughs> just enough to cover the beans. And I'm not sure what happened to my lid. <laughs> my bad. Do not trust my sister in the kitchen with your lids. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i am going to start my other jars in a few seconds as soon as uh series countdown is done let me just pour some hot water into these jars and get those moving and siri is good to go all right siri you do your business job all right this is not a smart idea don't do this at home one jar. Definitely don't do that. Nope, don't do that. That's really hot. The jar is still pretty cool. So, let me get over there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no, I didn't do that. Is it funny? kimchi jar down there and while she's at it guys yeah she do kimchi too but that's where I catch her on another day don't be looking at me nasty she look at me nasty guys okay I have wiped my lids let's fill these jars and get them into the candle I just wiped the lid and I went and put more stuff on it. I might need to put a little bit in here. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'll, let me just debubble first and then we'll see if I need to add more. My canner is full. I have 16 jars, 16 of the pint jars. These are the 16 ounce wide mouths. Question before you close it. Mm -hmm. um, do you need to add any more water than the water that you had in the what No, the... no. No matter what size jar, but no matter how many jars you put in, mm -hmm. your pressure, your amount of water still remains the same. It has to be at the three, um, three inches of water because oh. it will still create the same pressure oh interesting okay so for mr presto i am going to start this and increase the pressure so i'll turn up the heat a little bit to increase the pressure it's going to go for 75 minutes after it gets to its um uh 11 pounds of pressure um it's going to go for 75 minutes. So once it gets to 11 pounds of pressure, then this thing will be dancing. It will do its little doohickey like this. It will dance and then I start my timer. Okay. Because this one is now off and this is the one that has the um, quart size jars. The first one that we did. 
So I'm gonna let this pressure release and let it come down to zero. Once it get down to zero, I'll open and show you what's in it. And as you can see, um, it's still going down. It's releasing its pressure slowly. And it's right now at uh, five pounds of pressure and it will continue to go down to zero. And once it gets down to zero, then I will be able to safely open it. Sweet. Can't wait for that one. Right. Hey guys, so after we're done doing all of the canning, we need to wash the bottles for long-term storage or short-term storage, whatever works for you. Um, you need to wash the bottles off with warm soapy water and then take off the rings and um, use the vinegar and paper towel or whatever cloth you've got, clean cloth, and wash just underneath the lids so that you get all that black stuff or um, anything else that might be under there because you don't want it to make your um, lids rust during long-term storage. And periodically, you do want to check them. So please make sure that after you're done with all that, make sure you label the jars Label those lids with what the content are and the date of bottling.